Welcome to the fourth settings video exploring the accessibility features on your iPad. Under the settings, in general, you will find accessibility. Accessibility allows for students who may have a learning disability or a special need to access things on the iPad that may not, other, may not otherwise be available. The first is under vision, which is voiceover. If voiceover is turned on, it will allow the student to touch anywhere on the screen that has words, it will be read to them, and then if they double click in the box that is provided, it will actually engage what is there. For instance, if I turn on voiceover, it will read the box, whatever it is. So in this case, the black border is around voiceover, it would read that to me. In order to engage and work with that item, I need to double click, and to swipe, I need to use three fingers. So I have the box around voiceover, and I will double click in there, and it will turn it off. If a student needs this, they can easily turn it on and it will read to them whatever text they choose and whatever thing they tap upon. Below that is Zoom. Zoom can be very helpful if you're trying to look at something specific or if a student has on the screen, let's say they have a photo or something that they're showing to the class, they can zoom into a particular area or even use a box to go around the screen if they want to. When this is turned on, you can double tap with three fingers to zoom in Notice I have a zoom box that comes up. If I have that turned on with the um, zoom region, if I double tap three fingers again, that box will go away. Now if you notice down at the bottom, near the bottom, we have zoom region. I have mine turned on, which is why you saw the window come up. If I have full screen zoom, it will zoom into that corner or that portion of the screen, and then I can use three fingers around the screen in order to move. You can change the maximum zoom level, so if you want it to be more than it is, it's default set to 8, then you can change that as well. Below Zoom, you have invert colors. Now, normally most students do not need the colors inverted, but if you see this on an iPad, it's nothing to worry about. They've simply just flipped the uh, colors so that it looks this way. In some applications, this will not apply um, because of the way the app is designed. It doesn't actually need the inverted colors or function that way. Grayscale can also be turned on, which makes everything gray, and it removes all of the color options that are there. Finally, you have speech, and this will allow the iPad to speak a text to a student if it is highlighted. So if I would highlight and select a text, beside copy, cut, and paste, I would also see speak selection. If I have speak screen turned on, I can swipe down with two fingers from the top, and it will read what is on the screen. One thing to note is that depending on what the website is, you may see words, but if the iPad doesn't read it as a text, it will not be able to actually read it through the speech option. Next is larger text or bold text, which you can turn on if you need to do that for your students. Button shapes will actually put a shape around where you can highlight. So for instance, that put a shape around general. If I turn that off, that removes that as well. That is for any student that may need a little bit of assistance or a little bit of help to remember exactly where to go to change the location that they are in. Below that, you also have reduced motion. Your iPad Air, when you turn it on the home screen or in some apps, will actually look like the background is rotating with the turning of the iPad. Notice this reduces the motion so that whenever you're doing that on the home screen, it, it sometimes bothers students' eyes or they may have a seeing disability that that is something that they can't actually handle. So you can turn that off there if you need to. Below that, you will also see some of the other options that you have in relation to the interaction on the device. Assistive touch is something that if you turn it on will put a dot on the screen. This is also a great way to get to the home button if the home button isn't functioning properly. So whenever you do this, you'll see several quick options you can go to. And there are students who put this on immediately because they feel it is faster to work this way and they can customize it. Some students may not need it, but they may have it on there. And there's nothing wrong with the device if that shows up. It's just an option that they have chosen to use. Underneath assistive touch, you will see the keyboard. When you go to the keyboard, you can also do different types of things that will impact the keyboard usage. So if you have a student who may need a little more time uh, processing and there's a keyboard attached, you can change some of the things like to slow the keys down 
or whatever may be needed. Uh, should a lowercase keys, this affects, it says, the keyboards that use a shift key. So that is going to impact the way that the student can interact with the keyboard. Again, some students may need these accommodations and some students may not. The home button, you can actually change the speed of. So the click speed of the home button can be slow or slowest, depending on what you need, in relation to the double and triple click. So if I need to triple click, but I have a student that can't necessarily have a motor function to do it quickly, I can slow that down so that it will still engage on a slower triple click with the home button. Guided access can be used to put a student into a single app. When you turn it on, it will ask you for a passcode. You will enter that, and then you can enter guided access. The code will be needed to exit guided access, and your library media specialist or your lead teacher can help you with that if you have further questions or need assistance. Finally is your accessibility shortcut. If you choose any of these options, when you triple click the home button, you will have these to choose from. If you unchoose them, whatever is checked is what will happen when I triple click the home button. For instance, if I have a student who needs to be able to zoom in, I can choose this and every time they triple click it will zoom the screen and they do not have to use three fingers to double tap the screen. Those are the most used and basic accessibility features. Again, please talk to your library media specialist or lead teacher if you need help with any of those and thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. Please find our other modules on the WCPS Professional Learning site.